this video, we have a fully fledged PID controller. When I say fully fledged, we have the P, the I, and the D terms all active. Looking through our program, the very first run we have, we're calculating the error, set point minus PV. We're doing it this way because we want reverse action. Here, the next math statement, we're actually doing multiplying our gain times error, which is a proportional term. We're adding in the bias, which actually ends up being our integral term calculated here. And the derivative term, we're adding that. So there's our P, I, and D. Here, in this box, we're calculating integral. We're taking whatever our bias value is, and we're adding to that the integration, the, the product of the integral gain times the amount of error we have, times the differential time per scan, divided by 60,000 to put in units of uh, repeats per minute. Here's where we do derivative. In this case, what we're calculating is the uh, derivative term is going to go into that PID equation. The derivative term is based on how much derivative gain set we have, times the error minus the last error divided by 0 0.00167. And that's another one of those uh, time constant parameters to put this into uh, units of minutes. This run, that run right there is activated or energized every 100 milliseconds, every tenth of a second when that contact goes on the rising edge, which means we only take a look at the error and the last error and calculate rise over run every tenth of a second. We do that for a very specific reason. If we did this with every single scan, what would happen is every tiny little bobble, every tiny little jostle in the process variable over time would be interpreted as an extremely high rate of change, which would basically make our derivative term blow up. So we've turned the derivative scan time down to basically 10 times a second. So every tenth of a second, it recalculates rise over run. Rise being the error minus the last error, and the run being one tenth of a second expressed in units of minutes, as we have divisors for. Then over here is where we update our last error term. After it calculates rise over run, the error minus the last error divided by the run in time, it updates the last error variable with the present error. And then it waits another tenth of a second, does it again, checks the present error minus the last error, that's our rise, divided by our run in time, updates the last error, and waits another tenth of a second. And that derivative term gets put into our PID equation. So now we have a fully functional PID controller. Going back to our data view right here, we can see there's the output, there's process variable, there's set point, there's our bias term right there, our gain, our integral gain in repeats per minute, our derivative gain in minutes. It's a very, very small number because this is an inherently fast process. We don't want anything too big. If I take away just one of those zeros, I think we found 0 0.001, I think we found that it kind of blew up on us. Let's try this. Go back to set point of 70. You can hear the oscillation. It's even getting worse. Our derivative is reacting excessively to the rates of change it sees in the motor. We need to slow that down by putting in a tamer derivative term. Again, remember this is minutes, not seconds. So I go there, enter one more zero, enter that, and it stabilizes. What we have here is a very fast acting, responsive PID control system. Set point is 70%, PV of 70. If I try to slow this down with my finger, you can see the output immediately reacts, jumping up to 100%. There we go. I overshot there a little bit as the interval wound up. I'm going to move this set point down to a lower value, like 20%. Now if I try to slow this down with my finger, we're going to see the output rises very rapidly. Process variable is hanging about 18.5%. It does a very, very good job of controlling motor speed. When I let go of the motor with my finger, we overshoot briefly, comes right back into control, and settles at a set point of 20%. Now, I really can't do much better tuning than this without having a graph to graph my process variable and set point and output. I don't have that capability right here because we're doing everything for the ladder logic editor. However, I can see from the numbers we're getting pretty good control out of this. I like what I see. So this is a full PID algorithm and we've done it through PLC programming, ladder logic programming. It's used very little of its memory. If we take a look at how much memory we've used, we go up here to write to PLC, and when I click that, it says currently my program size, 51 steps out of 8,000 allowed steps. If I look at the project file, project file is 3.3 uh, kilobytes out of a free area of 250 some uh, kilobytes. So I'm looking at a very, very compact program. And I believe there's a place I can even check my scan time. If I go up here to PLC, and I go here to, oh, where 
use this construction program. Of course, this only happens when I'm on video. I can't remember exactly where that was. Anyway, um, I cannot remember exactly right now where the scan time is found, but there's a place where you can check that. I'm, at, I'm sure our scan time, ah, oh, there we go, scan time right there. Current scan time, two milliseconds, three milliseconds. That's extremely fast control for a PID controller. Uh, the minimum's at two, maximum's at six. We can lock in the scan time of some other value if we wish. And we do a fixed scan with this PLC. So what you're looking at here is a very, very fast update time. I'm not even sure the analog ins and outs in this PLC are updating that fast, but just to give you an idea of just how rapidly this program is able to update, uh, it does a pretty good job. So we've got a fully fledged PID control system. And by fully fledged, again, I mean full PIND control parameters. One more thing, this equation here is what they call a parallel equation. The P, the I, and the D terms are independent of each other. I can set the gain, the parallel, or sorry, proportional down to zero. I can set integral down to zero. I can set derivative down to zero independently. It doesn't affect the other terms. Many other controllers use what's called the ideal algorithm. Some use what's called the series algorithm. And in that case, the gain that we use for proportional multiplies by all three terms. That's another variant we could have programmed in here. We could easily go back in the math statement and make it an ideal equation with a gain multiplied by all three terms. But in this case, we just went with what's simple. So that's our PID controller right there. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We just want to show it, it is possible, if you understand what you're doing, to program in a robust, well-working PID algorithm in a piece of hardware like a PLC.